Amen. My name is Apostle Alex. Father, I thank you for your word. Father, I thank you for the word that blesses and the penetration of this word beyond what eyes can see in the souls of your people. Precious Jesus, you say this word I speak is life. I pray that this life, this word will be life to all the hearers, both online and in this place. I pray that this word be the sweet bread that comes from your throne of heaven, backed by you, Father, for your children. I pray that this word will fill the cups in the hearts of your people. I pray that this word will not be stolen away by the adversary, but it shall remain and bear fruit in our hearts and in our lives. I pray that this word will be a pillar to this ministry. I pray that this word will lift us to another level. I pray that this word will be accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit who convicts hearts and who opens and who helps even the weak. I pray that this word shall bind the devil and his plans against thy people. I pray that this word shall lift the lives of your people and shall lower the gates of hell which worketh against us. Father, I thank you for the lifted standard of your spirit in our midst. I lift your name, O oh, precious Jesus. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for such a precious and wonderful time to just worship him. I want to share the word of God with you. And I want to talk about the test of our hearts. The test of our hearts. Then put hyphen giving. Somebody say the test of my heart. Say it again. Jaribla moyo wangu. Then a hyphen kutoa. And I want us to read the Bible in the book of Genesis, chapter 22. Genesis, chapter 22. We start reading from verse 1. It's a very good story. We may be forced to read up to verse 19 for us to understand what the Lord is speaking to us. Now, it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. And said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Verse 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Stay here with the donkey. And the Lord and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here I am my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? 
And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a band of frame. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the Lord or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, My, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. And finally, verse 19, So Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose and went together to Bethsheba, and Abraham dwelled in Bethsheba. And that is the word of God. This is a very interesting story. And when you read about it, you get a lot of revelation and insight of life. There are many good things on earth, dear children of God. And our hearts yearn to possess these things always. And once we have them, they become our treasure on earth. All of us yearn for good things, and there are many good things on earth. And this means these things have a tendency to steal our hearts, and we can spend our entire lifetime working to maintain or to have even more of them. These treasures have the ability to enslave our souls and the soul of a man because of the pleasure they offer and the advantage of life on earth. In the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 19, our Lord Jesus says this, do not lay up yourself treasures on earth. And where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Verse 20. But lay up yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. And verse 21. For where your treasure is, your heart will also be. Amen. So Jesus warns us that we should not lay our self-treasure on this earth where moth and rust will destroy. And I've always said this, everything on this earth has its expiry date. 
There is nothing that is living on this earth forever. Even what can live longer will finally expire. Even what looks good today will finally get old. A new car on the road today will be a scrap 50 years after this. A young child that looks lively today will become an old man with wrinkles tomorrow. Because everything has its timing, everything has its expiry date. And the Bible says everything has a beginning and it has an end. The only that cannot expire is the word of God. It is God himself. He is everlasting. He is yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible says everything passes away, but his word remaineth forever. Somebody say amen. Now, when the Lord talks about that we should not store our wealth on this earth, this does not mean that we should not have wealth or treasures on earth. It does not mean that we cannot have wealth or treasure on earth. We just give them out because you see what? We are waiting to go to heaven and that is where our treasure is. That is not what this scripture means. It does not also mean that we cannot possess things on earth. We can inherit, we can possess wealth on earth. It does not also mean that we should never work hard to acquire wealth on earth. I have given three things that this scripture does not mean. Number one, I say it does not mean that we should never have wealth or treasures on earth. It does not mean that we can never possess treasures or possess wealth on earth. It does not mean we cannot work hard to acquire earthly treasure or earthly Wealth, that does not what it means. If it means like that, then in the case of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who are blessed by God himself with great wealth. He is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. If you see God call himself by a name of a man, just know that that is a company of God in his manifestation for generations. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is a system that God introduced. This was a man, but his life demonstrated God himself while he lived on earth. And the picture of that man is the face of God. So when God calls himself by the name of a man, this man demonstrates who God is. His life, his history, his generation demonstrates the being of God Almighty. And we can see that, for example, our father and our Lord, our father in the Lord, a man of faith, Abraham. In the book of Genesis chapter 13 there, we can see in verse 2, we can see in verse 2, Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Who was rich? Was he rich in heaven or on earth? Abraham was very rich on earth. He was rich in what? Livestock, in silver, and in gold. And any man who had those three things was the wealthiest man on earth. We talk about men of today like Bill Gates and all the wealthy men. Abraham was wealthy. And these blessings were not given to him by his own, but God blessed him. Verse 6 says this. Verse 6 says this. Now the land was not able to support them that they might dwell together for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. The Bible is talking about Abraham and his cousin Lot. 
They had increased so much, they were so blessed that the land could not support them. Look at that scenario. Mungu anaweza kukubariki mpaka ukose nafasi ya baraka. Yani everywhere the space to fill your blessing is filled up. These guys were so blessed until the blessing began to become a challenge. They wanted more space and there was a rift. This is just a demonstration to tell you that God can bless a man with earthly possessions and earthly riches. Amen? We can look at Isaac, his son also, in the book of Genesis 26, verse 12 to 14. We see the same scenario. It was not that the blessing of Abraham alone, also his son Isaac. The Bible says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Let's go to verse 13. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Go to verse 14. For he had possessions of flock and possessions of herds and great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. This is the son of Abraham. I normally tell people, if your blessings, the blessings you have stop at you, this was not God's blessing. And you are not rich. You are poor. The blessings of God goes to your children's children. They go yonder. They go beyond you. If you are blessed today, but tomorrow when you leave this earth, your children are poor, consider yourself you are never blessed by God. And that is why you need to be very, very careful when you say, I am blessed, you need to understand how God establishes and blesses man. If you are blessed and your children cannot go to school, your children cannot maintain that blessing even a year, that when you die, they embezzle all your blessings, they are jailed, some of them die because of the blessing, three years, or if you awake from your death ten years, you find your home is poor and sold, you are not blessed. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord make it rich. Baraka Sabuana, Hutufanya Matajiri are not poor. And these blessings are passed to our generations as a baton. Now we see another son that comes out of Isaac. His name is Jacob. We all understand the story of Jacob. He had nothing. So the blessing is not in the material form. The blessing of a man rides in the spiritual realm. And when God says you are blessed, the earth will call for a meeting to bless you. Enemies will not sleep. They will have to sit in conferences, prepare documents for only you. The end product of what they are working for is you. We know that Jacob and Isa were sons of who? Huh? They were sons of Isaac. And then Jacob runs away because uh, you know the story. Isa was the firstborn. And according to the doctrine, the firstborn was to inherit the blessing of the father. But in this case, God had another idea. God comes and says, no. My inheritance, as much as they are twins, it is not in the one who came out first. It is in the one who came out later. His name is Jacob. And the person who had that secret and revelation was not Isaac. It was Rebekah. So when the time of blessing came, Rebecca understood she is a woman. She cannot bless Jacob. But she knew that God said, Jacob is the one who carries the mantle. So she tricks, she tells Jacob, I have been married to your father. I know how he operates. 
the way he's talking, he's about to release a blessing. Then as now Isa goes to the father because Isa was used to going to hand and bring venom to his father. And his father will enjoy. And he says, Isa, you have served me for many years. Now go and prepare the last one. I want to download the blessings upon you before I die. Serious men and women don't just die. They pass the baton of God's inheritance to their children. If you are a man here who will just die, you better not be called a son of God. What you carry which is of God, never allow yourself to die with it. Pass it to your children. Most of you are suffering because your fathers never understood this technology. They were rich and they died with their wealth. The devil stole it and gave it to his children. Because the father was so selfish, he could not call one of his sons and say, I bless you and download this to you that you may stand in the gap for your brothers. Then the mother heard it and he said, Jacob, your father has sent out Isa to go and look for something to eat. Go and do this and that. And you know the story. And come and let your father think you are Isa. And indeed, when Jacob presents himself before the father, the father says, but you see, the voice is like for Jacob. But the skin and the body, the smell is like for Isa. But he could not understand that whatever God said, no man can stand against it. Even Jacob himself, uh, even Isaac himself could not stand against what God had already ordained. He knew, he had that sense that this may not be Isa. But because it was spoken in the spirit, it had to be accomplished. He downloaded the blessing, saying, my son, I've enjoyed the meal. I've all, blah, 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 blah. And he finished. Then after that, Isa comes. I say, Father, here I come. I say, who is this? He says, Isa. But you have just been here. He say, it is not me. And the story comes out that Jacob stole the blessing of his brother. And Isaac cried and said, Father, is there nothing that I can have? The father said, when it is given, it cannot be taken back. But just come that I may give you anything that remains. Never accept to be given what has just remained. May you be given the original. May you be given the original. And Isa is enraged with his brother. And Jacob runs out of his home with nothing. Somebody say nothing. Does the Bible say he ran with a goat? Does the Bible say he ran with a wife? He didn't even have anything. Nothing. But on top of him, there was a divine blessing in the spiritual realm. And he went to his uncle Laba. And the atmosphere called for a meeting. And the atmosphere said, a man has entered here. This man must be blessed. Wherever, whatever he touches must be blessed. And Laban began the story. And Jacob found Laban to be more trickery than him. And tricks Jacob. Jacob said, I want a wife. And Laban said, okay. He works for seven years only for Laban to trick him and give him who? Leah. Instead of who? But Jacob says, okay, fine. He works another seven years. He gets what he wants. He tricked him on the livestock. When he gets, he says, no, I need to But whatever that he spoke, God multiplied what was of Jacob. To the point when a time had come, Laban became jealousy of Jacob. That now his flock had grown. It was so mighty, big, that now he could not understand. Anytime he tricked him, God improved and multiplied his blessing. Because the blessings was hanging on Jacob from the spirit. When the blessing of God is hanging on a covenant man in the spirit, the devil can trick you. Wicked men can trick you. People can come and steal it but what God has already divine in the spirit uh, will eventually come to pass. If you understand you are a covenant man, uh, 
Don't be deceived. Don't let nothing take away. Don't let anybody think that he can take your blessings. He cannot take your blessing. God says, whatever I bless, no man can curse. Come on. Whatever I bless, no man can curse. Can a man curse Israel when I have blessed Israel? Can a man? Ah, Balaam, Balak, can you curse Israel when I, the Lord, the beginning and the end has blessed him? Ah, ah. And Balaam went back to Balak and he said, I have tried to curse, but when I pick a curse, what comes out is a blessing. When I release a spell, what comes out is a promotion. Ah, ah. When the enemy releases a spell against you, and you are a covenant person, and you are blessed by God, the spell promotes you. The spell puts you to another level. The spell puts you to a higher ground. Somebody shout, Amen! Ah! Ah! When they release a spell on a holy gate, they found that we are about uh, to build another sanctuary. We are about to build another cathedral because the Lord is about to do an amazing thing. Ha! Huh? Ha! Huh? When they release a spell and say, let him die. Ah! They find you alive. In fact, you have added a little bit of weight. In fact, you are putting on better suits. In fact, you are driving another car. In fact, you are married. In fact, now you are living a higher life. Don't let people eh, make you fear. Don't let people deceive you that they can curse you. If you are a covenant child, just know the more they trick you, the more God multiplies you. The more they try it, the more God takes you to another level. The more they go, take you, they push you to the east. The blessings rise. They push you to the west. The blessings rise. They push you to the south. There you are blessed. They push you to the north. It is not about the place. It's about what is divinely ordered in the spiritual realm. If you take me to Nairobi, this anointing can still rise a better church and a greater church. It is not about me being in Pongoma. It is about the grace of God that worketh for me. Ah, somebody say amen. amen. And the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 32, sit down. Genesis 32. Verse 5, Laban has to give up. When he had pressed so much, when he had pushed it a little bit harder, the mighty king of glory stood and said, you cannot touch my anointed one, Laban. You better stop it there or you will die. <laughs> you cannot stretch it more. Kuna kiwango adui anafika. Mbingu sunasimama. Zinasema, you cannot stretch it more than this. The more, when you try it, you will die. When you, you cannot push him more. You cannot push her more. You cannot do any more wickedness. When you try it, I'll kill you. Don't play with this God. When he has an interest in a man. Ah. When God has an interest in a man, when God has a system that he has downloaded in a man, and this system is to bless generations, and this system is to introduce him uh, to our people that never knew him, and this system is to lift his level, and this system is to glorify his name. Don't joke with that system. It will overflow you. It will crush you to powder. It will burn you to us. I pray in the name of Jesus that the system of God in Holy Gate will overflow our enemies, will burn them to the earth. Ah, those who have pushed it a little bit, I pray in the name of Jesus, they have pushed. Uh, may God Almighty now arise. May the King of Glory arise in His vengeance. 
they have tried you but the Lord arise now arise in his vengeance they have tried to do evil against you but may the Lord arise in his vengeance they have tried to hit you yes you have felt a little bit pain but may the Lord arise there is a level they reach and the king of glory stands on his throne and he say you cannot go yonder you cannot beat him more you cannot remove him I am the one who put him there I am the one who put her there. I am the one who made it happen. Ah. There are many Labans on this earth. There are many Labans around in the church. Those ones who think they can trick a blessing. Those who, one who thinks they can deceive you. Those ones who think they can finish you. But the more they try to deceive, the more their deception works for you. The more they try to do evil, the more they are evil work for you. Because you are a covenant child in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that? Yeah. Can I hear a big amen? Yeah. Something must be born today. The king of glory must roll in the lives of people today. The king of glory must roll in your life today. The devil has tricked you more. The devil has tried it. He has pushed you on the wall. But by this anointing that God gives me, I declare in the name of Jesus, they cannot go yonder. May the Lord God Almighty begin now to work on them. Begin to beat them down. Begin to bring them to where they belong. Their trickery must come to the end. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, enough is enough. It is written in the Bible. This God has killed men who have stood against his will. This loving God has killed men who have refused to do his will. This God has killed men who are used by Satan. And there are people who think they can push it harder. Hata kuna watu wanakuja hapa na mairesi. Wanafikiria they can push it harder. My friend, uh, Ah, don't push it harder. Don't press on that button. Jesus will rise against you. Don't try it. You cannot uproot what God has planted. You cannot. Ah, the fire is burning. The fire is burning. The fire is burning. The fire of glory. The fire of promotion. The fire of success. The fire of his glory is burning. Don't try God. Don't be a man who wants to try God. Before we do it, before Never be Laban in the church. Never be a Christian who is a Laban. Who is trying to wrestle the blessings of men. And trick men to be blessed. Trust God to bless you. Trust God to bless you. And how do you do that? Enter into his new covenant of the blood. Become a true son of God. And you'll see the inheritance of God in your life. Don't wrestle for somebody. You don't know where God has come from me. Come on. When you see a man go far, there is a history behind. When you see a woman stay far, there is a history behind. Don't look at me today and think I was born yesterday. Don't look at the church today and think I was born with it. There is a history. There is a place I began. There is a way I've walked with God. There is a time I've been crying. There is a time I've been celebrating. But God has withheld me. God has supported me. God has strengthened me. Don't push me, my brother. You don't understand where I've come from. Don't push me, my sister. Don't try it. Don't try it. Don't try it. Don't try it. I am warning some people. Don't try it. Uh, God can allow some wickedness for some time. But when the time comes,
the heaven will stand. Don't try it. I declare to the altars of Mongoma, don't try it. Don't try it. The fire of God is now rising. It's rising. It's rising. You will not kill me. I'll be here today and tomorrow in the name of Jesus. I will not die, but I will live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Don't try it. I declare to a servant of God, you cannot have what I have. I did not receive it from man. It is God who gave it to me. Go to the Lord. He will give you a portion. Don't try it. You cannot get anything by killing a man. You cannot get anything by killing a man. If you have anything that is of a person, it's a photocopy. And the photocopy will not stand the tests of time. Very soon the photocopy will wear out. And it will be realized that it's not meant for you. You better have the original. Even in the church, there are so many Labans. They are in the church, but they are fighting a man of God. They are in the church, but they are fighting their own brothers. They are in church, but they are binding things. They are in the church and the devil is working in them. Don't be that person. Turn away from that Labanic spirit. Come out of it. Let God help you. Let God build you. Let God lift you. Repent from building and fighting others. You cannot get it. Get it from God. The God of Jacob again blesses Jacob, a man who left his home empty-handed, empty-handed, empty-handed. He went somewhere and put his head, and the Lord said, this is a holy place. I'll bless you. Ah, where you are going, <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you are running away from what. <laughs> I'll bless you, Jacob. You are a covenant son. I am God who keeps the covenant. I am God of your grandfather Abraham and you are in the line of my blessing Jacob even though you have nothing today I will bless you Jacob just believe in me the man was putting his head on a stone how can a man who has no pillow a man who has no bed he has no comfort of life God comes and say and Jacob sees a ladder and their angels, they descend, they ascend, they descend, they ascend. The activities of heaven are happening. They descend, they ascend, they are descend, they ascend. And Jacob doesn't understand. And the voice of God comes and says, Jacob, uh, uh, don't be ensnared. Don't be deceived by the challenges of this life. I am the Lord who will walk with you. I will bless you. Where you are going, I have made a way for you. I have prepared a way for you. I will fight your battles. Mm. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male and female servants. I have sent them to tell my Lord that I may find favor in him. He is addressing his father, his brother Isa. He's coming back home. <laughs> you know, Kumbe, the one entity of God that scares the devil is his blessings upon his children. You know, Jacob is telling Isa, I came out of that place with nothing. I want to tell you that I did not steal that blessing. It was the divine order of God. I am back, coming back home, but I'm not alone the way you thought. I have great wealth. I have servants and wives and children. I have great things, Isa. I am now a company. I am now a strong man. And send some as an offering to Isa to appease him. Even though he feared, the Lord was with him. And when he feared a lot, the Lord told him, send away your wife, send away your children. I want to have an encounter with you, Jacob. I want to take away this fear. 
I want to take away what is inside you that is not mine. And he wrestled with God the whole night. He wrestled. Sometimes when God has blessed you, he, the blessings to be maintained, he has to put and pull some things from you, lest they come and consume what he has blessed you with. When I just feel sir. So the earthly treasure to the saint of God, I used to prove God's provision and glory and power. He says, silver is mine and gold is mine. <laughs> and I decide whom to give. But now, I want to come to the bottom of my story. And I want you to listen to me carefully. God has a divine system of testing the heart of men to know where their hearts are. God has a divine system of testing the heart of man to know where their hearts are. He will give you a blessing and he wants to know if your heart will be on the blessing or him. He will test your heart to see how much you love him. And this is the examination many of us have failed. In the beginning point, you asked him. He released a blessing to you. And it was meant to test you. Then he asked you to give back. And he refused. He gave you something that looked little. Isaac was the only son and was the only genuine son of Abraham. And God says, your only son. You know, at this time, God is telling Abraham, give me your only son. Ishmael is there. But God says, give me your only son, Isaac. There are blessings that you may have, but they have no divine connection to God. God addresses Isaac, the only son of Abraham. Give it to me. And God wanted to establish his glory upon Abraham that you will be the father of nations. You will be a highly exalted man. And out of your loins, even the king of glory, I, my only son, will come out of it. And Jesus himself establishes himself on the blessings of Abraham, our father. And even today, we are enshrined on the blessings of Abraham in Christ Jesus. All Christians, believers, are carried by the blessings of Abraham. But before Abraham reached there, the Lord tested his heart. He gave him the son, and he wanted kujua, moyo wa Abrahamu, uko kwa baraka. Na, the son of Abraham, Isaac, is of age. Kanaweza kubeba kuni. Which means kalukua of age. Kanaweza tembea na kwenda na baba yake. Kalikuwa kanaelewa mambo ya kiroho. Because kanapo sikia baba akisema tunaenda kutoa the bill. Kanauliza baba na kuni ndio hizi. Na kisu ndio hii. Na moto ndio huu. Na wapi the bill. Inamanisha hakajui. Kalijua. Wewe mzazi. Usifikiria kwamba mtoto akifika 18 ndi utamfunza maadili ya buwana. Anza kufunza mtoto maadili ya buwana mapema. Usikuwe mbinafsi. Wewe uko busy. Lakini unaacha mtoto anafunzwa na televisheni na anafunzwa na ulimwengu. Unakuja kanisani, unaacha watoto nyumbani. Watoto hawajui scriptures. Hawa watoto watafunzwa na shetani. Na watatumika kama maagenti wa shetani. Na wanaeza ansa na wewe. Hata mtoto awe mchanga na mnagani. Mufunze maadili ya buwana. Wacha akue katika maadili ya buwana. Siku ambazo tunakaa adui ana target generation ya watoto. Wengi sasa wamesha ingizwa katika ufalme wa giza. Wanatumika kusababisha maajali na kuwa watu. Wanatumika kuharibu na kuweka kansa kwa mili za wazazi wao. Don't take it for a joker. If God has given you children, when they are still young, 
Speak the goodness of God. Declare the goodness of God. Read the word with them. Teach them to pray. Come with them in the church. Dedicate them to the Lord. When you are gone, what you sowed in them will stand to help them to be able to fight the challenges of life. Unajua katika mawazo ya Abrahamu, tayari alikuwa shauwa Isaac. Usione kwamba hakuwa. Kabla mwanadamu hajatenda kitu, Mungu tayari ameona intention. Abrahamu alikuwa tayari amechinja, si hata alikuwa na joko. Alikuwa tayari ameachana na Isaac. Wewe Isaac vile umesimama mbele yangu, wewe ni dhabiu, wewe ni dead. This man was a man of a moyo mgumu. Lakini haka Isaac ni kama pia kalikuwa na anointing. Because Biblia isemi kalitoroka, kalikaa tu. Which means kalikuwa ni kama Kristo ndani mwake. Kalikaa tu kwa msalaba hapo tu, akakupigana. Abraham akasema nilikuwa nimesha kumaliza akachukua kisu. Ai. Hata kama wewe ni nani. Akainua. Sauti kasema Abraham. Don't do it. Now I know. I know. I know. Now I can tell. Kuna watu hapa ukiona wainainua mikono. Ni kwa sababu ya umaskini wao. Ukimwona analilia Mungu machozi ni kwa sababu ya shida zake. Si eti moyo wake umependa Mungu. Ukimwona anafunga siku kumi ni kwa sababu ya taabu zake na matatizo. Ukimwona anafanya kazi ya Mungu committed ni kwa sababu ya shida zake. Kumbe moyo hauko pale. Wacha siku ambayo pesa zitaingia mfukoni. Acha siku ambayo atakuwa CEO ana kazi na gari. Muone kama ataendelea kufunga, ataendelea kuasha, ataendelea kuingia kanisani na kuomba na wengine ndio utajua mtu anapenda Mungu. Wapenda wacha nikwambie kitu. Ukiona mwanamme ana kazi na anapata mshahara wa pesa mingi, anaendesha gari lake vizuri, ana nyumba nzuri na plot na watoto, lakini anakuja kupiga magoti akililia Mungu. Heshimu huyu mtu. Hii si mzaha. Wakati Mungu anaachilia baraka juu ya watu. Anaachilia kwa vipimo. Anapima moyo wako anaona. Baraka zisiwe kizingizio ya kuacha Mungu. He tests by asking you to give back what he has given you. And God sees the heart of this man and he says wow 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 abraham you are a trusted man i can never doubt you anymore you can allow your son to die for me i cannot trust you anymore the system of god testing the heart did not stop at abraham there is a story of the woman of zarephath in the days of prophet Elijah. Elijah goes and finds a widow collecting firewood and Elijah tells him, go and give me water. As the woman walks to give water and say, hey, hey, mama, and chapati. He say, hey, in the name of the living God, I have only one meal left between me and my son and we prepare for our humble death. And Elijah tells him, do it woman. You will see the multiplication of God. This was a woman of faith. She went and prepared the bread and gave the man of God. And immediately she did that. Her barrels were filled with oil and flour. Her barrels were filled with food and water. And during the whole season of hunger, they were living in a five-star hotel with a meal day by day. Other people were dying. They were okay. The provisions of God were there. Praise the name of the Lord. 
And Jesus one day, you say that is in the Old Testament, in the book of Luke chapter 21. He stands, you can see verse 1, Luke 21 verse 1. And he sees rich men bringing offerings to the altar. And they gave according to the power of their riches. Look at what they see. He looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts in the treasury. Continue. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. Continue. So he said, truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all. Continue. For all this, for all this out of the abundance have put the offering for God. But she, she out of her poverty put all her livelihood that she had sacrificed. If you want God's blessing, you must demonstrate your heart of sacrifice to God. There are many Christians right now. They say, Mimi ni maskini. Ni tatolea mungu nini. Angalia uyu manamuke. Bibilia inasema, she gave out of her poverty. And she gave all her livelihood. Kama uko hapa na unafikiria, wewe ni maskini. Umaskini wako hauta kuondokea. Kama hauta uchukua umaskini na upatie mungu. Wa kristo siku hizi wanaingia kanisani. Wanapewa baraka kidogo. Wakienda wanakula zote. Wanarudi mungu wa waongeze. Wa kristo wengi wanalilia mungu kanisani. Buwana ni bariki. Buwana ni inue. Lakini mungu alipo wapa kidogo. Hata kumtolea mungu fungu la kumi. Hawa mtolei. Umekaa miaka buwana amekupa kazi. Baada ya mwezi wa kwanza. Hata mshara wa kwanza. Huku tolea mungu fungu la kumi. Na siku zako zote. Sasa umejaa. Sasa unamishara. Sasa unapinge maisabu zako. Umesahau mungu. Umesahau mahali ulibarikiwa. Unakuja kanisani unatoa 50 boba. Unafikiria hiyo ndio inatosha mungu. Umesahau tabu zako ambazo buwana alikuondokea. Umesahau shida zako watu walikuita maskini mtu ana maana. Sikuizu kitembe wanasema mtoto wanani. Uyu mjamaa, jamaa wa ekima, jamaa mbaya meinuliwa, jamaa na baraka. Ni mungu alikutendea. Lakini sasa umesahau madhabau ya buwana. Unatembea ukikula vizuri, unapiga maesabu zako vizuri, unaweka investment zako vizuri, lakini hujui buwana mesema, usiegeze katika dunia. Hiyo inamanisha kwamba, kuwa na mali, lakini pia mungu anapasenteja hiyo mali, wakati unakula, patia mungu chake, endelea kuinulia buwana, towa thabiu mbele ya buwana, usikule na uweke kwa sababu ya maisha yako, peke yake. Na watu hawajui kwamba ukitaka baraka za Bwana sio mali tu ni baraka ambazo watoto wako na watoto wa watoto wako watakula hizo baraka ziko in shrine in his covenant na ukitaka kuwa a covenant child lazima uwe mtu wa kutolea Mungu kwa dhabiu usitolee Mungu vitu dhaifu dhaifu kuna wakati kasrika Tolea mungu vitu ambavyo ni tapiu hata wewe mwenye utalia machozi. Unapeana ukijua hii inanigarimu. Hii ni kitu nimependa. Hizi ni pesa zinge nisaidia. Pengine ninge chenga nyumba. Pengine ninge somesha mtoto. Lakini nimesikia sauti ya mungu moyo ni mwangu. Bwana mesema ni peleke. Sita shika na ni kukula. Ni taleta kwa matapao. Wakurisho wengi wanakuja kanisani. Wanaangalia, wanaangalia aposo, wanasema, huyo aposo haitaji. Haukuji kanisani kupatia aposo le chochote. Inheritance yako hiko mbele ya buwana. Kama utakuja holi getufkirie, kuna wakati utaona aposo akiwa puwa. Wakristo upeana kanisani kwa sababu, wanataka kusaidia mchungaji. You will never have that advantage here. Hakuna wakati, you will find me poor and needing your help. It cannot work because I am a covenant child. Unapeana kwa sababu ya baraka zako na watoto wako. You are not giving to holy geta. You are giving to your children. You are giving to your inheritance. You are giving to your future. You are not giving to any man. Kuna watu hapa, hauja itolea mungu the bill ambayo mekugarimu. Hakuna. Na unajita covenant child. 
Mungu amekubariki una vitu vingi lakini Bwana hana hesabu yoyote the percentage of God in what you have God is not there unafikiri yani bado uko katika atukitoa shilingi 1500 umetolea Mungu sana Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana Bwana ametubariki na kile kidogo ambacho tuko nacho amekuja kutujaribu lakini what have we done tumekikatalia tunasema mm, mm, hii ni yangu kwani lazima ana nifosi kupeana Biblia inasema tunatoa kwa moyo hiyo ni ya hiyo injili ya huko nje <laughs> akove na do you think that god was begging abraham eh was god begging abraham he said take your son your only beloved son and bring the son to me pastor hakusema please abraham help me Elijah did not beg the Sarafath woman. He said, go and bring me water. And then she was going to say, hey, stop. And also chapati. <laughs> this was a very rude man. Unajua watu wa Mungu hata kama ana kitu usicheze na ye. He has a lot. A man of God has authority to call down the blessings you have. Na unarudi maskini vile ulikuwa. even though me i cannot do that but the thing is this we keep on crying to god to remember and bless us but we have violated this principle god gave you a business god gave you a job god gave you children maisha yako yamebadilika unamtolea mungu nini How much sacrifice have you ever made to God? Wapendo. This your pastor you see, I have taken a loan for God, 3 million. I've gone to the bank signed a loan. Some of the things you see me doing, people think that in fact people equate me with their own things. and i give millions for god what i should be mimi ningekuwa tajiri sana nimejenga magorofa but mimi ni tajiri kiroho i'm a covenant child if you go to a church where a pastor is a covenant child huyu si mtu atasimama mbele yenu kwa ubiria injili ya kupeana ndio mtoe He will teach you to give and give to God all the time not because of a provoked message to give Kuna watu mpaka wakiona vitu vinanunuliwa kanisani wanaleta ubishi Hata pastor atuhusishangi Akili yako ni nzuri Wakati unakujanga Jumapili unawekanga nini hapa? Unataka kuhusishwa na nini? Ndio ulete siasa yako. Kwa kila ambacho hujatoa. Watu naona tu vitu zikitendeka. Ulikuwa unataka uone nini? Wale ambao wanajua maono haya hawaambi wangi kitu. Utawaona wakinitafuta. Wanachukua shilingi 1000 anasema mchungaji ndio hii. hawangoji mtu kuambia kile wanafaa wafanye akiona hii kitu inatakikana anaenda anatafuta analeta akiona kuna udhaifu mahali anaenda anapiga hesabu anasema hii kanisa inahitaji hii hakuna mtu unamwambia is a covenant child and i pray that god will release a covenant knowledge in all of you pesa zenu sio zenu ni za Mungu. Hiyo nyumba ambayo utajenga ama unajenga huwezi kuenda nayo kwa grave. Haitatoshea kwa jeneza yako. Hiyo prado haiwezi. Finally. I want to finish by saying this. The church is full of spiritual defaulters. 
Somebody say spiritual defaulters. Do you know who these are? Unataka kujua ni akina nani? Ayasikia sasa. Number one. These are people who steal God's tithes and yet they beg God to bless them. They steal God's tithes and they beg God to bless them. Hata kwa hiyo biashara yako yenyewe unapata 200 in a day. Unatoleanga Mungu fungu la 10. Usiniambie ati wewe uko kiroho. So nimesema one of the spiritual defaulters number 1 ni wale ambao they cry God to bless them but they steal their tithe. Number 2. People who have unpaid vows filled up in their spiritual realm yet they beg for God to bless them. Umetoa vows kwa Kiswahili inaitwa nini? Eh? Nadhiri. Tulipoanza generator ukulipa. Tukakuja vani ya kwanza probox hukulipa. Tukakuja hii vani ingine hii kubwa hukulipa. Tukakuja Thanksgiving ya kwanza hukulipa. Tumeanza partnership hata hukutoa hata siku moja. Sasa tulikuja hii Thanksgiving ya siku gani? Hakuna. Mungu akiangalia katika spiritual realm yako, voices zimepanga na zote zinapiga mitembe. Asibarikiwe mpaka nilipe. Asinuliwe mpaka nilipe, asipewe kazi. Niko hapa nimengoja miaka tatu. Na wacha nikwambie wapendwa. Na kuambia tu kweli, nakuhubiria injili ya saa hii ya kiungu. Kama unadhiri unajua kuna nadhiri ambayo ulitoa na u, ulisema na ukutoa hata mbingu utaona. Hata uombe siku 20. Hata uishi holy kabisa na usilipe hiyo nadhiri utakaposimama kwa geti ya Mungu malaika atatoka na kitabu na afungue hiyo andiko na afungua aseme those who don't pay their vows are foolish and foolish people don't enter heaven because God doesn't deal with foolish people Yona iko wapi hiyo andiko mama inakuanga gani wewe ndio unahubiringi hiyo sana Hiya nathiri, niambie. Inakuanga Ecclesiastes. Eh? Ecclesiastes 5. Sindio mamu? Eh. Wewe Naomi, tafuta hiyo 5 wangalia hapo nathiri utueke hapo. Mungu hawezi kukuadmit mbinguni. Kwa sababu wewe ni mjinga. Usifikrie ukikata kulipa nathiri bado wewe ni mkristo. Uta, mungu atakusamee na ema itakutosha haiwezi. Hiyo nadhiri umevunja sheria there. When you make a vow to God and do not delay to pay. Uh, you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay. For he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. Wakato utakapo inuka tu, sasa ndiyo huyo, wewe ndiyo huyo, sasa umeondoka duniani. Sindiyo hivyo? Mkuo kifunga, mkuo kitembea vizuri, ata uliachana na ulevi. Umeachana na masengenyo, uliachana na kutafuta watu maneno. Wewe ni mkristo mzuri, hata unombanga kwa tangs kabisa. Na mpaka ukafika mahali, ukajihisi weni mutakatifu kambia mungu ni chukwe. Tuende safari buwana. Mungu akasema ok. Haza siku ingine umelala, ukaona ni kweli ninaenda. Ukafika kwenye malango ya, ya, ya mbingu. This is heaven. Malaika atatoka na andiko hili. Unasema nifungulie mimi niingie, ndio basi lako ni safi kabisa. Lakini kumbe kuna kadoa ndani yenye kaonekani. Kanaitwa vos. Ile andiko litafunguliwa. Na utasomewa utaambiwa when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it. For he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed you will remember instantly that in 2020, I made a vow in Holygate. Pengine hata ulihama Holygate. Ulienda Christian Establishment Restoration Appraisal. Ha <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Unajua watu ufikiria nikihama hapa niende kanisa ingine sasa hizo voo zimefutwa na Mungu. Acha ujinga. Kama uliingia Holy Gate na penye ulikuwa kuna voo ukulipa, enda ulipe. Nenda rudi kule patia mchungaji hiyo voo. Usinifanye ni kuombe maombi na ubarikiwi na kumbe ni hizo voo liacha huko. Hayo madhabahu bado ni ya Mungu na wewe ndio ulisema na kinywa chako nenda ulipe. Hii ndio injili itafanya watu wajue Mungu kweli. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hivyo usitoe nadhiri kama ujue utalipa na baada hii baada tutatoa nadhiri ya thanksgiving. Lakini usitoe kama hujui utalipa. Number 3, namaliza number 4, people who come to church with expectation to be given, not to give. Kanisa siku hizi zimejaa na watu wa ajabu wapendo. Mtu amekaa hapo haombi, hakujangi maombi, hausiki kwa ibada, hafanyi chochote kanisani, lakini akipata shida ndio ule kwa mchungaji na mara mingi wanakujanga as an emergency. Hawakwambi wanakupata tuko kwa shughuli zako wakipata mtendakazi i want to see aposo pastor mwingine akikuja hapana sio huyu aposo mchungaji anasema si nikusaidie hapana aposo kwani huyu aposo ni Mungu ama ni Kristo hapana wacha nikuombe Mungu aposo kwani unanizuia kuona mchungaji wangu unanizuia kuona aposo si aposo wanataka mahitaji yameinuka mahitaji aposo vile unaniona hivi nimelala siku tatu lakini nikiangalia hilo tumbo umekula asubuhi. Sio vibaya mchungaji kusaidia watu wake. Na mimi sita kataa kusaidia watu. Lakini ukweli ni kwamba wakati wewe unasaidiwa umesaidia nini? What have you contributed in the house of God? Kuna watu hawana pesa lakini utamuona kila siku anafagia hapa, anapanga viti, a, anafanya kazi ya Mungu hapa na moyo mmoja. Huyu hata akipewa akikula, huyu anafaa. Wewe hakuna hata maombi uji. Wapendwa, ukitaka Mungu akuinue, usiwe mtu wa kupokea tu. Na wewe fikiria na tafakari, ni nini ambacho unapeana? Ni nini ambacho pia unachangia kwa kazi ya Mungu? Ama wewe ni wakuja tu Jumapili na kujaza namba na kusema ni mshirika wa Holy Gate. Kuna watu ambao namba 4 wanapeana lame offerings to God and expect more blessings. Mtu analeta 50 bob. Mungu amekupa 10,000 unaleta 50 bob na unataka Mungu akubariki na 200,000. Haitafanyika. People who who saw by God saw by himself that he will bless Abraham Praise the name of the Lord So there are people who give lame blessings to God and they think that is enough I want you to note that you do not give to your pastor or you don't give because pastor is needy Kuna watu uchangia pastor wakimurumia sana kanisani Don't give your pastor in pity You are not giving to pastor sasa huu pastor wetu tunaweza mpa nini? Si kila kitu ako nayo. You are not giving to me. You are giving for your own generation. Kuna watu hapa una baraka lakini huwezi kuzileta kwa madhabao. Kwa sababu nafikiria sasa huyu pastor tutampa nini? Unipati mimi. Unasema si pastor huwa anafanya hizi vitu zote. Nafanya lakini na wewe you are a covenant child and you know you ought to give. The Bible say give and it shall be given back to you it is more blessed to give than to receive a blessed and a covenant child every sunday any time anaingia kanisani huwa anatolea mungu kulingana na vile mungu amembariki he doesn't need a sermon he doesn't need pastor to provoke them in a sermon to give you give to god any giving that promotes the agenda of god he, i.e. soul winning giving to the poor to the widows attracts god's attention quickly towards you na angalia bwana anaambia abrahamu nitakuonyesha mlima ambao nataka unitolee dhabiu lakini wakristo wengi 
Bwana alikuonyesha mlima wako ni Holy Gate. Lakini wewe unatuma unatuma dhabihu zako Mombasa. Sio kwa kila mlima Bwana amekuambia uende utolee pale dhabihu. Ni vizuri kila Mkristo awe na hekima, have maarifa, have knowledge. Usifikirie kila mtumishi wa Mungu ambaye anahubiri kwa televisheni akisema tuma elfu saba na shilingi saba ni mtu wa Mungu. Kuna watumishi wa Mungu kazi yao ni to enrich themselves sio watumishi. These are wolves while realize wanaweza tapeli watu. Wamefungua televisheni, wamefungua uh, very funny pages. They are seeking a offering kila akihubiri anasema toa. Akihubiri toa na wanaleta ushuhuda wa uongo testimonies watu wamekunja midomo hivi kumbe ni watu wametolewa street they are part they are conspirates conspiracies wewe umekaa pale na ujinga umeacha mchungaji wako pastor alex hapa unatuma 1700 na hapa hujaitoa hata shilingi 700 hautabarikiwa utabaki vile ulivyo tu sio kila udongo utapanda utavuna kuna udongo ambao bwana mwenyewe amekuelekeza ukipanda pale utapata mavuno. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Nina haki kupokea kutoka kwako kwa sababu wanapanda baraka kwako. Naombea maisha yako. Naombea destiny zako. Naombea watoto wako. Madhabahu haya yanaongea kwa sababu ya maisha yako. So madhabahu haya yanahitaji dhabiu na baraka zako hapa. Moto wa dhabiu zako unaendelea kuchomeka. Let your candle of giving continue to burn on this altar. And giving is not just once. Giving must be continuous, consistent. You gave last week, you give this week, you give again, you give again. It is a lifestyle of a covenant child. How you don't give once and then you go and wait and say, "Now let me wait for God to bless me." Nilipeana hundred thousand. Watch aniona tani fanya nini? My friend, you will be disappointed. Utajinyonga. Never give God with the agenda of uh, bribing him you cannot bribe god give with the agenda of love come with love though with expectation but with love god will bless you in his own beautiful season and time hawezi kukopeshwa deni ni muaminifu zaidi hutaleta mbegu yako kwa madhabao na utolee mungu kwa upendo na kwa uzuri na moyo ulio msawa na Bwana akose kukuletea mavuno utavuna upende usipende na giving is an altar that breaks the strength of your enemies si Mungu ameambia Abraham kwamba and your generation the altars of the enemies will not stand against you asali amwambia hivyo eh kwamba uzao wako hautashindwa Maadui hawataweza kushinda uzao wako. Giving is a weapon against your enemies. Na unakumbuka Israeli kama taifa la Bwana, kuna wakati kuna mfalme alitoa mtoto wake. Na walikuwa wametolea unabii na mfal na nabii wa Mungu kwamba wanaenda vita kushinda. Na huyo mfalme akaenda akatoa the firstborn ambaye angechukua ufalme, akamwanika kwa ukuta. Vita vikabadilika. Israeli walishindwa. Sasa kama unaniambia dhabiu ama kutolea Mungu haiwezi hata hii principle work into the evil kingdom. Wakristo wengi wameacha madhabahu yao ni madhabahu yao yamezima. Nikisema madhabahu yako yamezima haimaanishi madhabahu ya Holy Gate imezima. Moto wako hapa unaoongea juu yako. Moto ambao umeinuliwa ambao unahita jina lako. The fire that calls your name on this altar is off. Halafu unataka upigane na mtu ambaye ameuza eka moja ya shamba akabeba 500,000 akapeleka kwa madhabahu ya waganga wewe una eka 20 hata hafa aneka hujaitolea Mungu utabeza wengi wetu tunashindwa vita kwa sababu maadui wana hekima kutuliko wanatolea miungu wao sisi tumechukulia our god for granted We give filthy lamb sacrifice 50 bob 100 50 bob 100 cut up pens Na sisemi hivi kwa sababu nakashifu kupeana 20 bob ama 50 Yule ambaye hajiwezi anaweza toa lakini kuna watu hapa inafaa utoke kwa standard hiyo kwa sababu tayari Mungu amekuinua 
Never come here and give you a 200 when you know. You are not a person of 200. Give thousands here. Write checks of 50, 100,000, 1 million, 2 million. Put it on this altar. If you, God will not bless you. Now, ukiandika check here 2 million, enda nyumbani, achana na mimi. Just go home and sleep. Wacha kunifata fata. Nilikapatia 2 million. Is there a change of lifestyle? Iyo 2 million nilipeana. Amenu wako garingini. Achana na mimi. Ukileta hapa 50,000. Wewe enda nyumbani. Kila mtu anakazi yake. Enda nyumbani bano. Si hatu kitoa pesa hapa. Unashinda unatufata fata hapa. Hati wametumia nini. Na hii hi partnership. Hii partnership. Mina tumanga five. Wali tumiaje kwa hii. Kwa hii crusade. Achana na sisi. Tukikupigia esabu utaongeza. Hata kunifata fata. Ukitaka kuona mtu muaminifu, kitu cha kwanza ye mwenye uhutoa. <laughs> Anatoa zaidi na wewe. Sasa hawezi kula yako. Tayari ye mwenye uhutoa. Mtu mwenye utoi, di anaiza kukuibia. Any person who is stingy is a thief. He can steal from you because he always wants to keep for himself. Kwa hivyo kitoa milioni moja, achana na mchungaji. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Ambia mwenzako toa na uachane na mchungaji. Mm. Mungu atakutana na wewe, achana na mimi. Na wakati unatoa na naangalia jina, naangalia jina nasema, "Ai, nimekaa kwa ofisi na tafakari nasema, "Ai, Bwana, Mungu uliyeniita. Nikitaja jina yako." Meetings naitwa menye huko. Nasema huyu naye tumfanyia kama vile ilitisha kwa Jacobo. You will be blessed. Hallelujah. I want to come to the end of this sermon. When you give to God, give dearly, give sacrificially. Give cheerfully and not grudgingly. Kuna watu upeana na complaining, God will not bless you if you do that. Sikia sauti ya Mungu wakati unapeana. Kuna watu hapa Mungu amekuambia na bado tu unangangana na ye. Yaani Jacob wrestled na Mungu lakini jua lilipotua alisema Bwana sawa nimekubali. Jua lilipoanza kutoka. Wewe ume wrestle na Mungu jua limetoka lingine limetoka lingine limetoka lingine limetoka you are just still wrestling. Sasa hii ni miaka mbili huku toa. Kuna siku moja mshirika alikuja kwanga kanambia pasta Kuna shamba nyumbani Mungu ameniambia nitoe. Lakini bado nafikiria. Akarudi tena. Pasta bado nafikiria mpaka leo alitoka church hakuwahi toa. Na kuna watu wengine wakati unapeana kitu ukitoka kanisa unahama nayo na yote. Sasa ulitolea sisi ama Kuna mshirika alitoa dhabio hapa na alipotoka na akahama nayo na yote. Nikamkumbusha nikamwandikia ujumbe nikamwambia dada yangu Hiyo au kunipatia rudishia Mungu. Hakujibu alihama nayo yote. I've talked about being consistent in giving. And when you give, don't be anxious. Go and be expect and be calm. Finally, don't give on altars of men you don't know. I think I've talked about this. <laughs> Usipita tu tauna hapa unaona mtu anahubiri vizuri ama unaona televisheni. Mtu ana kanisa ya watu wengi sana. Unajua wengine wetu knowledge yetu iko chini. Tukiona pasta na kanisa mingi, watu wengi, thousands na anahubiri juu ya kutoa. Na anasema vile Mungu amembariki na tunafikiria ni kweli. Wengine ni matapeli wametumia powers of darkness kuleta watu. Unajua kuna watu wanalalanga katikati ya ngombe yenye imekufa. Kuna watu wanalala kwa graves. Kuna watu wamefanya vitu. Mapepo zimetuma zinasanya watu zinaongeza kwa kanisa. Kanisa linajaa hivi. We unafikiria ni mungu. Sie mungu. Ni nguvu za giza. Anapo sema peana, una, you give. Unauza plot unaenda unapeana. Usuwai to other bill ama uh, or offering kwa altar ya mtu wa Mungu ambayo hujamuelewa unaweza kuwa una, 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 una finance agenda ya kishetani 
Huyo mtu unapeana pesa huenda ni agent ya devil. Anachukua pesa hizo za biu anapelekea shetani because wao huwa waaminifu kwa shetani. Wanaenda huko wanapeana. Pesa zako zinapelekwa kwa madhabahu ya giza. Pesa zako ndio zinakosa accident. Pesa zako ndio zinaleta uovu. Ulitoa ukifikiria unatolea Mungu, shida zimekujaa. Ni kwa sababu ulitoa pesa kwa madhabahu ambazo hujui. Na aswa sana naonya kanisa. Kama wewe ni mshirika ambao umekuwa kituma pesa kwa televisheni bila kuelewa huyu mchungaji ni nani. Hujui misingi yake, hujui alianzaje, hujui mambo yake. Tafadhali koma, una madhabahu yako hapa. Toa dhabihu yako kwa madhabahu haya. Na Mungu ni mwaminifu. Kwa sababu sisi una historia yetu, unatujua. Unajua vile tunaomba, unajua kati tumekasirika na tumefurahi. Hakuna kitu tumejificha. Toa dhabihu yako kwa madhabahu ya hapa Mungu. Na kama unajua kuna mtumishi wa Mungu ambao unamwelewa, unapotoa ni sawa. I'm not also not saying I'm the only man of God you should give. There are other great men of God you may feel to give to their ministry. It's okay. But if you understand their foundations, don't just give them. You may be giving for your death and your destruction. May God help us, church. May God inspire you and make your covenant child to give and give faithfully. If you have been defaulting in your tithing, begin to tithe faithfully. Begin to offer offerings sacrificially to God. Begin to pay your vows. Na kama kuna vows ujalipa, please rudi nyuma tafuta hizo pesa later. Na Mungu atakubariki. Let us stand on our feet.